Okay, in this lecture, lecture two, uh, I will introduce the MTPI design. This is an overview of this lecture. In this lecture, I will first lay a recap what is the phase one oncology clinical trial. And then we will introduce the MTPI design. Okay, so here is a very brief and quick uh, recap of the phase one dose funding trial design. Uh, if you want to see the details, uh, you can see my first lecture, lecture one, introduction to phase one designs uh, in YouTube. Okay, so what is phase one? Uh, those funding trials, usually uh, this type of trial is a non-randomized one-arm small uh, study. The small study means uh, the conventional uh, sample size uh, ranges from, uh, for example, 12 to 30. And sometimes uh, maybe we also have the pilot study just to involve six patients, uh, but that kind of study doesn't implement or utilize uh, any uh, methods or statistical consideration. So I don't include these kind of trials uh, into the dose funding uh, trials. So one of the uh, primary objective uh, for the phase one dose funding trial is to fund the MTD, uh, maximum target dose. Uh, often we will set up a target, uh, target a toxicity rate or target a DLT rate. Uh, for example, we call the FE. And uh, this number is a probability, uh, commonly ranges from 15% uh, to 33%. For example, of course, other kind of target, uh, you also can per specify in your uh, study. So this is a plot. It means that in the X axis, we have per specified those levels. And we don't know which those level corresponding to our target MTD. And here is a toxicity rate in the Y axis. And for example, this is our target toxicity rate. And we want to find by trying uh, some participants based on their data information we want to decide uh, which dose is the MTD. For example, uh, this is MTD, okay. Uh, so what is a phase one dose funding design? If you have already seen my first lecture, you know that uh, a phase one dose funding design is essentially a systematic role uh, to escalate or de-escalate or stay or the dose during the trial precise. So this means that phase one trials is a kind of algorithm for us based on the updated information to make the decision for the next cohort of patient, patients, uh, which dose should be assigned to them to be treated. Okay, so we have three possible decisions to be made. We escalate the current dose. If the current dose is too toxic, the escalate the current dose is if the current dose is, is very safe or stay if the current dose is close to the MTD of our target. Uh, so the phase one designs is a kind of a set of roles with the goals of identifying which dose is MTD with a high chance based on the small sample size. So this is very important to go of the phase one trial design. We want to find the correct dose. If that dose is MTD, we want to have a very high probability, very high chance to identify this, not to miss this, or so not to incorrectly find the other dose, not the MTD, to be claimed to be the MTD. And we also want to have another kind of goal is to be able to allocate a small, small number of patients to the below or over the MTD dose. Below is means that uh, we don't, why we don't want to allocate, allocate the patients to be uh, the dose below the MTD because below the MTD means that uh, the dose is maybe not, uh, not therapeutic. So this is unethical to the patients. Above the MTD, of course, is too toxic to the patients. It should be avoided. So this is a, uh, uh, 
what does a phase one trial want to do? Those funding trial want to do, okay? And now we move to the MTPI uh, design part. So why in lecture two, I introduced MTPI? Uh, the MTPI is, uh, is a abbreviated name uh, by the, this, the modified toxicity probability interval design, the MTPI design, okay? So why I introduce this because the MTPI designs one is one of the first proposed Bayesian interval designs for phase one dose funding trials. We also can this is modified TPI design. So TPI is the very first designs uh, by by Dr. Renji uh, in 2007, and then another designs uh, in MTPI named by MTPI designs uh, are published in uh, 20. 10. Both papers uh, were published in trials, uh, in clinical trial, uh, journal clinical trials. So, and as far as I know, it is used today, for the, today is February 2020, 2022. It's used uh, in the phase one pipeline by Merck, pharmaceutical company. Okay. And it is also one of the methods mentioned in China CDE. China CDE is the counterpart of the US FDA, European EMA, et cetera, regulatory agency guidelines for phase one trials. Uh, so the MTPI. Another mentioned method by China CDE guideline for phase one trials is the bone design. Uh, so this is the reason that why I introduced the MTPI design in lecture two. Okay, here is a uh, details for the MTPI design and published by Renji. Currently, Professor Chi is, uh, uh, is working at uh, University of Chicago. Okay, uh, so the derivation of those funding rules for the MTPI method involves uh, two steps. Uh, the first step, we should uh, introduce or elicit an equivalence interval, we call the EI, uh, which will cut the interval zero to one uh, to three uh, toxicity probability intervals. We can see that we, if we have, uh, 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 yes, we, we will introduce it. I will introduce later in details, but we will partition this interval into three, uh, three probability intervals. And then the second step is uh, based on this uh, EI, uh, uh, we'll set up a decision theoretical framework and uh, derives uh, base rows. Uh, to guide how to escalate the escalator dose. Okay, so here is some notations. Uh, we assume that there are D dose levels uh, in the phase one trials. Okay, D, D may be five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five dose levels, for example. And we want to find uh, which dose or which dose level uh, corresponds to the MTD. And, uh, and each dose level, I, I is from one to D, right? And the PI is assumed to be the unknown probability of toxicity associated with the ice dose. So PI is unknown. Okay, uh, it's unknown probability toxicity uh, for the dose I. And uh, we, uh, we assume a monotone a trend for this dose levels in terms of the toxicity probability. That is P1 less than P2 uh, less than PD. Uh, this is uh, makes sense. Uh, assumption because uh, uh, for the, especially for the cytotoxic uh, agent with the dose increase, the toxicity is also uh, increase, at least not decreasing, non-decreasing. So this assumption is makes sense. And uh, we also use the NI to denote that as a current uh, dose level I, how many patients have been treated at this dose, so the NI. So NI is how many patients are treated at a dose level I. And the PI is the true unknown probability, uh, toxicity probability at the dose level I. And uh, the EI equivalence interval is defined as this kind of in interval. Uh, so the PT is our target, okay? The PT is our target, for example, 25%. The LT rate or toxicity rate, our target, we want to find which dose is corresponding, uh, which dose have the toxicity probability closest to this PT. The episode one, episode two, uh, I will use, uh, I will introduce in the next slide 
what about these two numbers? If we have these two numbers, these two numbers are very small. Probability, for example, uh, point, point 0.5 or point, point 0.3. So this is equivalent. So this means that in this interval, uh, the physician or investigator think that uh, all the uh, probability in this interval uh, is closest to the MTD, is, is indifferent to the PT, okay? So it means that here is a, it contains those doses considered so close to the true MTD uh, that physicians would agree to select them as the estimate MTD, okay? Uh, the EI uh, for the trial will be elicited from collaborating physicians. Okay, so here are some uh, notations, uh, the PI, uh, the D, the P1, PD, uh, NI, and also this kind of uh, equivalent, equivalence uh, interval. Here is how we, uh, what is the details about the, uh, the EI. For example, if the true MTD, uh, has a toxicity probability PD uh, is equal to 0 0.3, 33, uh, uh, 33, uh, 30%. Okay, so this is our target. Uh, uh, for example, a physician may agree to select any dose between this, uh, this interval as the estimate MTD. So this is the EI equivalence interval. So in this equivalence interval, the X1, X2 is equal to 0 0.5. You can say 0 0.3 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. Uh, 25, 0.3 plus 0.5 is 0.35. Okay, so this uh, is the elicited uh, uh, equivalence interval. Of course, in, in another trials, or even in this kind of trials, maybe based on different kind of rationale or historical information, maybe another physician or, or PI may agree on another ER. Okay, for example, for these kind of things, this means that it's one, it's two is, Point one, okay. So here is a simple guide for, for elicitation of the EI uh, following these two steps. Uh, so we first ask the physician uh, to indicate a lowest toxicity probability uh, that she would be comfortable using to treat future patients uh, without dose escalation. Okay, so we would ask that the patients that, can you give me a kind of lower bounder? And, uh, Below this lower bounder, uh, you will think uh, it's very, uh, very uh, non-toxic. Uh, you will not consider to escalate the patient. Okay, escalate the dose. So you just uh, elicit this epsilon one, and ask uh, the physician again about. Uh, can you give me a higher bound? About this bound, you think the dose is too toxic you will be uncomfortable to treat the future, future patients above this boundary, okay? So you can elicit it in the two. If you have these numbers, you can get the equivalence uh, interval. If we have got the equivalence interval, epsilon one, epsilon two, uh, we know that we can just partition the unit interval into three sub-intervals, okay? This interval, this equivalence interval and this intervals. Okay, we can call this, uh, this called the underdose interval. This is just uh, uh, the equivalence interval and this is just uh, um, upper or overdose intervals. So these intervals we can see is corresponding to lower, close to, or higher than MTD respectively. So here is the MTBI design algorithm. Uh, suppose that the current treated dose is dose I. I can be one or two, 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 two D. And after the toxicity outcomes of the, of the last cohort observed, uh, that means that uh, based on the current uh, observation or information, uh, we can make a decision about escalation, stay or de-escalation across band corresponding to these intervals. Uh, we will see that which interval has the largest unit probability mass, UPM. So it specifically means that which interval corresponding to the highest probability. For example, if this interval in the middle have the highest probability, it means that based on the current dose level I and all the data, uh, we will think that this interval will be 
uh, the most probability to occur. Uh, if this interval is the most probable to occur, it means that we think that the current dose level i is closest to MTDI. If this current dose i is closest to MTD, it means that we should stay the dose. Stay the dose, it means that for the next cohort of patients, we, still, we should still treat the, this, those patients in the current dose i. Okay. If, if this dose level has the most uh, higher probability, has the highest probability, it means that the dose level i uh, is based on the current, current information uh, is above the MTD. If this dose level i is above the MTD, so for the next uh, uh, cohort of patients, we should treat them at the low, at the, a lower dose level. So we should de the dose, okay? So this is a, a roughly a, a interpretation of this. Uh, I will, in the next slides, we'll exp explain the, the UPM. Okay, so here is a basic algorithm. And there are extra uh, two safety rules uh, of using the RTPI. The first safety rule, number one, is the early termination. The early termination means that if the first dose uh, uh, have this kind of things. So this is means that based on the first dose level, based on the data, if the P1, P1 is, uh, 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 is an estimated uh, toxicity probability for the first dose. And the PT is a target DLT rate, okay? Uh, because the MTPI is a Bayesian methods, so we can compute uh, the probability of P1 greater than PT, this probability. Uh, this, if this probability is very, uh, very large, for example, uh, greater than Cassie, okay, Cassie, for example, is 0.95. So this means that the first dose is very, is, is, is possible to be very toxic uh, because P1 greater than PT, uh, this probability is very big. So this means that we should uh, initiate uh, termination activation to the trial. So we stop the trial uh, due to early, uh, early, early stopping due to excessive toxicity. Okay, so this is a safety rule one. And the safety uh, rule number two is called the dose exclusion. This means that mm, anytime, for example, uh, 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 if at the dose level i plus one, uh, the toxicity probability greater than PT's probability is very big. So this means that we cannot treat the patients at the dose level i plus one, right? We should then exclude the dose, level, dose i plus one and the header from the trial uh, because why we also ex exclude uh, higher than I plus one dose from the trial is based on the monotone increasing toxicity assumption, right? Because if the I plus one is already toxic, the higher than, the dose higher than this uh, should be more toxic. Okay, so this is the safety num rule number two. Okay, two things need to be answered from previous slides. So what is UPM? Uh, so the UPM, uh, so, and another question is how to compute the UPM and uh, uh, these probabilities, right? The two safety rules. So, here is a, a, a finger can explain these kind of things. Uh, so, for example, <clears throat> here is uh, three intervals we can see. In the middle is uh, an equivalence interval, and in the left is uh, uh, under. Uh, MTD interval and above is uh, over, or we call the under toxic, it's the over toxic interval. Okay. And each time uh, we, can, we can compute uh, a probability. For example, the UPM for, for the left uh, interval, as zero to PT minus X1 can be computed as a PI uh, fall into this interval's probability divided by the length of this interval. 
So what is a UPM? UPM is just basically just simply uh, the PI uh, fall into these intervals divided by each respective length. So this is a UPM. So how to compute this uh, exactly? Uh, we will uh, model the toxicity probability PI. Uh, we, we will apply a simple beta binomial model for PI. For example, we denote the PI as unknown toxicity probabilities, and we use the Jeffrey's price beta 0 0.5, 0 0.5 for this PI. And uh, assume the current as the current dose level I and NI patients treated as this dose level I. And why is the number of patients experience the DLT or toxicity? So the current data can be written as YINI, right? The NI is the number of patients uh, treated at a dose level I. The Y is the number of patients having DLT at a dose level I. If we have this, we know that uh, the PI, the prime is beta 0.5, 0.5. So the posterior toxicity probability for PI is still a beta, it's updated by beta yi plus 0.5 and ni minus yi plus 0.5. So we have PI's uh, distribution and we can easily calculate PI follow into each of these three intervals, right? And for example, the MT, uh, UPM uh, falling into the left interval is just uh, simply calculated like this. And because we know the PI's distribution is to the beta, so we can easily calculate the PI. For example, the P1 greater than PT's probability, and also the PI plus one greater than PT's probability. And we can make the decision uh, by this kind of calculations. So here is, uh, again, uh, we just uh, see how to implement MTPI designs. Okay, uh, we have the, so firstly, we have per specified those levels. And then we should uh, let the physician to elicit uh, equivalence interval. If we have the equivalence interval in the middle, uh, we can partition the unit probability interval into three, three intervals. And of course, we should write firstly, the patients to specify the uh, target toxicity rate, PT. And uh, here is also not mentioned about the sample size. So for the MTPI design and other bone design, for example, in the future to be introduced, uh, we also should set up a maximum sample size, for example, 25 or 30 or something or 15 or something. And then we can use the information to update the P1, P2, P3, for example, and we can just calculate the safety rules and also the UPM and to get the, uh, the trial to, to make the dose escalation, the escalation state uh, decisions. Uh, here is software for implementing the MTPI. Uh, there is a commercial software provided by the LEIA Consulting uh, Incorporation. And LEIA currently is also, uh, should be the sub company of the Centel uh, uh, Incorporation. So here is output on, uh, and the decision tables look like. So for example, we have the PT. PT is a target uh, toxicity rate, 30%, 0.3. And the epsilon one, epsilon two is 1.5. This means that the equivalence interval is from 25% to 35% is regarded as close to the MTP, can be acceptable. So we can see MTPI can particulate the decision table. Okay, how to read this table? Uh, for example, so here is, uh, in, in, the, in this, here is a number of patients, for example, from one to 15. And here is the number of patients with, that, with the DRTs, because we know that if we have three patients, for example, we can have zero, one, or two, or three DRTs, right? So here is the number, number of DRTs from zero to maximum 15, because if we have 15 patients. So how to use this table to make the uh, escalation, the escalation. For example, as a current stage, in a certain dose level, we have three patients treated. So we see here, you can see here are three patients. And then if there are zero, after, for, for example, the first cycle one, zero patients having DLTs, 
So we can see here, the zero and the three. Here is um, this kind of the blue color have the E. E is means escalate. This means that based on MTPI algorithm, if zero patient have BLT among the three patients, we should apply the escalation action to the next cohort patients. Okay. And then we can see that if we have three patients and we have one BLT, we should apply the stay action. This means that for the next cohort patients, we should still continue to treat uh, the patients as a current dose. And if we have two DLTs among three, we should de-escalate. And if we have three DLTs among the three, we should apply the DU. DU is means that you can say de-escalate to the previous lower dose and the current dose will never be used again in the trial. So this means exclusion uh, safety rules we have already used. Right? This dose is too toxic and will be excluded from trial. And also the other higher dose than this dose level should be excluded as well. Okay. Uh, we can try another, uh, for example, currently we have six patients treated. And uh, if we have two patients, two DLTs, we see this. If we have one, zero or one, we should escalate. If we have two, we should stay. If we have three, we should de-escalate. If above the three, for example, four, five, six, we should de-escalate and never try uh, this dose level in the future. So this is just a, the, the, a kind of example of how to use the MTPI in real practice. Uh, here are some references uh, you can see. Uh, the MTPI design is uh, published in 2010 in clinical trials. And uh, uh, the other, uh, another most recent uh, uh, version of MTPI is MTPI2. And MTPI2 is also uh, closed to the keyboard designs, the keyboard designs, and also keyboard designs for the combination trials proposed by, uh, by me here. Okay. So this is this lecture, and in next time I will introduce the MTPI2 keyboard design. Uh, see you next time.